I used to gym before, but not Olympic weightlifting. So just gymming for fun and fitness. And uh, I used to do bodybuilding first until I came across a weightlifting competition. That was in Nairobi, the year 2012. Uh, it was African Championships, uh, qualifications for the 2012 uh, London Olympics. And uh, I was impressed by guys lifting. So since then, that was my turning point. The, uh, uh, I remember it was over the weekend, and that m the following Monday, I was in the gym, a weightlifting gym, trying to lift, that, uh, trying to lift like those guys. And what uh, really inspired me is that uh, it can be an opportunity for me to represent my country internationally. So that's the only thing that, or rather the main thing that uh, attracted me to weightlifting. And that's how I found myself like representing my country in international competitions. The very first event, uh, I'll never forget because uh, it was a dream come true. That, that was uh, 2014 Commonwealth Games. So first of all, I, was, uh, I just started training in uh, 2012. So in two years time, my goal was to be at the Commonwealth Games, but I didn't know how. And uh, no one believed in it because no one has done that before, at least in Kenya. And uh, I told everybody that uh, I'm training for Commonwealth Games, but no one believed it because no one has done that before. But uh, interestingly, two years uh, later, I was representing Kenya at uh, Commonwealth Games, and uh, which I remember very well. I was uh, in my room after the competition. Then it was just dawning on me that, hey, Webster, what just happened? Like, it's a dream come true. Because as a child, I used to dream of uh, representing my country in international uh, platform, but I didn't know how. I wasn't an, uh, a runner or a marathoner or a long distance runner, but uh, I never knew how until weightlifting came across and uh, it happened to be the, the channel that I was able to represent uh, my country, which was a, a childhood dream that uh, actually came true. And uh, I think that's the most, most memorable moment in my entire career. There's so many things involved because uh, I also remember people telling me, my family and friends, like, hey, go and come with the medal, gold medal, you're strong, we see you're physically strong. But, uh, you know, I went there, then I realized that, hey, it's not just as easy as that. Like, there's a lot of work that goes on, like training takes years to build on, and uh, it's uh, a lot more scientific than uh, just uh, something for the eyes. Like there's so much like you have to undergo to be able to perform among the best. First of all, for me, it was uh, inspirational because uh, some of the athletes that I normally like uh, watch on TV, for example, Commonwealth Games is a multi-sport event. So I also got to meet uh, athletes in uh, different disciplines. For example, the likes of Usain Bolt and uh, like uh, using bolts, I can really point it out. Yeah, it was an opportunity for me to meet with him. And uh, through interaction with them, I got to learn, for example, those who were among the top had spent a lot more time in the sport. And uh, telling, like, I, always, uh, I was always asking them first thing, like, hey, how come you're this good? And then uh, telling, uh, telling me their stories, like, hey, it's, a, uh, it's like, a big, big process, it's scientific, like it's not just uh, a matter of uh, showing up, training, and making it, like uh, it, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, strategy that's required to be able to perform at such high level. For example, they have the support system, maybe the government or corporates that are sponsoring the athletes, and uh, their full-time, their full-time job is the discipline that they are doing. Yeah, unlikely, unlike for us, it's a part-time. Like you have to uh, do your normal job to get an income, then still find time to commit into this discipline. So uh, I came uh, from those games with the idea of uh, what can I do so that I can be able to match them or maybe even beat them next time that you're gonna meet. I think we have everything that it takes. Even tomorrow, like we, just say like tomorrow we, we are making our athletes full-time professionals like we have everything that it takes for example we have the structures and the uh, resources that are that uh, are are needed like we can afford it 
but uh, I think it's, uh, I can say the commitment, like we need someone with that vision who can commit to it and uh, it will pay off. Because for example, we see our long distance runners, for example, they're in the police forces, they're in the forces and me interacting with them, like I came to notice that their job is to run. Like they don't go patrolling now and then and here. So their job is to wake up in the morning, go run, and at least they have a means of income from the forces besides whatever they make through competing. So that's why, that's one of the factors why uh, the runners are able to perform really well because to them, they're more of professionals, fully professionals. And like uh, some of us who like have a normal day job, like you work eight hours or so, then you still have to create time to, uh, to commit to that discipline. And, for, and another thing is uh, sponsorship. Yeah, like we have big corporates, big companies that can still come in and support the athletes uh, by providing that all the resources that they need. Because it's a matter of resources and uh, coaching and uh, uh, everything that uh, uh, will support the athlete's environment to be able to perform better. I think from my point of view is uh, adhering to the laws because we have laws. Because I don't think there's anyone who is good even the outside world. But uh, compared, for example, if I can compare with the uh, places where performance is okay, I think it's the laws are obeyed. The laws are adhered to such that uh, everybody has to follow the law. And in case you break the law, like you have to be punished for it, for it to work. So for me, I think if uh, people really adhere to the law, I think that will solve. If someone is entrusted with management of such a thing, they should be able to be accountable for everything they do. Yeah, such that if they do something wrong, you know, they, they, they are held accountable for it. But for me, I think locally, like uh, people are not held accountable for it, so the habits continues and keeps on because no one is getting punished for wrongdoing, such uh, to the point where like uh, wrongdoing, wrongdoing seems to be rewardable. For me, I was like, hey, how come I've never known this thing? Because I think I knew it a year before I started doing it, but I had not known it before. Because uh, like it's not marketed or uh, uh, popularized as, uh, as it should. And uh, one thing we can do about that, for example, for me personally, as an athlete, I'm trying to sell weightlifting as much as I can. Yeah, I'm a coach, committing to coach people to know it and uh, using uh, media, whether it's mainstream or social, or social media, to try and promote weightlifting so that people can be aware, even just being aware that there's something called Olympic weightlifting. When I tell someone Olympic weightlifting, they think of a bodybuilder, they think of a muscular, big guy. Yeah, that's the image, typical image that comes into someone's mind because I think bodybuilding is more popular and many other kinds of lifting. So, uh, one of uh, the misconceptions is uh, I'm not a bodybuilder. My focus is not really building muscle and getting big, but about just lifting this weight in a certain style. Yeah, another misconception is uh, there's only certain kind of people who can be able to do it, that is professionally. And so, because uh, the most people can be able to, like to see what uh, people are, or rather people have been able to see is the professionals doing it. But hey, it can, be, it can be a simple fun activity that someone can be able to do it for fitness and fun and not just for professional sporting activity. Olympic weightlifting is a style of lifting weights. Yeah, that's what separates it from the others. So there's many, quite a number of disciplines involving lifting of weights. First is bodybuilding, second is strongman, third is powerlifting, and fourth is Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. But the difference between all these is the style. For example, for us Olympic weightlifting, we have two styles of lifting. One is the snatch, the other one is clean and jerk. So those are the two styles of lifting that define Olympic weightlifting. And uh, I think it's because it is included in the Olympics, that's why, or rather that's how comes the name Olympic weightlifting, to separate it from the others. Then we have others like bodybuilding. For them, it's about, about uh, building muscle. So whenever a bodybuilder lifts weights, it's about building muscle rather than about the weight that they are lifting. So for them, they don't focus on the weight, but rather the effect on the muscle. 
And then for powerlifting, it's mainly a style. For them, it's a different style, which is the bench press, uh, back squat, and deadlift. And then we have strongman. For them, it's uh, many different styles of just moving objects. That's why I can say they can pull, be pulling cars, uh, lifting stones, lifting barbells. So yeah, that's strongman for you. So I think that's the major, or the basic difference between all those disciplines. First thing, I think I can start with what I am personally like I can do. First of all, like take advantage of social media. Like everybody, almost everybody's on social media nowadays, like every day. Someone has to log in, whether it's uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, or so and so. So taking advantage and putting content, weightlifting content on social media, like goes a long way. And uh, mainstream media as well, use it to try and promote uh, Olympic weightlifting. And then uh, another thing is just uh, using the athletes who are already uh, familiar with Olympic weightlifting. Some can be coaches. They can go out there and coaching uh, people in different gyms and locations. So when you get to a weightlifting gym, so typically you set up your barbells and uh, the weights. But one thing when you step into a weightlifting gym is safety. So safety comes first before anything else. So first thing about safety is warming up well to make sure the body is uh, ready, the joints are open and uh, lubri lubricated so well to be able to lift weights so that you stay safe and don't break a bone or anything like that. So first, that's why we have this uh, first we have a PVC pipe. This is just a, an empty pipe. So it is okay for even a little child to be able to, to do weightlifting. So this is the lightest material that we have. So we take a PVC pipe. Then you can do a couple of warm-ups with it before going into the bigger bubbles. So we have, uh, then we have a Technic bar, which is a lighter bar, 7.5 kilos. We have a 15 kilo bar which is made for ladies because uh, the size is different with the men's because, uh, mainly because most ladies have a smaller hand than a typical uh, male. And then we have the big bar, which is made for the men's. It is quite thicker than all the others and weighs uh, 20 kilos. But first we start with the PVC pipe, then do a couple of warm-ups with it before picking up the bubble. So for example, we are doing the snatch, so I'm gonna take you through bits of here, uh, bits of uh, the snatch on how to go about it. So first, we use a wider grip. That's the snatch grip, because we wanna send the weight overhead in one motion, straight from the floor into overhead in one motion. So first thing you can do, get your snatch grip. Then you can do a couple of warm up. That's called the snatch deadlift, which is the first phase of the snatch. Second, you can do the overhead squat, which is the final phase of the snatch. Then we can do some jumps, like that, which is the second phase for the snatch. And then after that, you can be able to combine the entire movement to make it a snatch. So if I connect the first phase, the second, and the third, it makes a snatch. So a snatch is basically lifting a bubble from the floor to overhead in one motion. And looks like this. Yeah, those are three reps of the PVC pipe. Now after this I can be ready. To, uh, to try it with the, with the bigger barbell. So I might go to the uh, lightest bar, which is 7.5 kilos, then do a couple of reps. Let me do three. Yeah, those are three reps. I'm feeling warm and ready. And the one thing with weightlifting is uh, progressively loading up the barbell. So we start with the lightest weight, then as we warm up we can add as much as you can according to each person's ability. So if the max I can do is uh, the empty barbell, for example for a beginner, then stick to the empty barbell. 
Otherwise, for me, I'm more advanced, so I can go to the bigger bar. Let me use the men's bar, which is 20 kilos. So I get a grip of it, then do a couple of reps for the snatch. So just one important thing, there are rules on how to perform the snatch. So for example, for the snatch, you have to lift the bubble from the floor to overhead in one motion. So in case you break any of those rules, the lift is disqualified. And then you have to lock out your arms at once at the top for a lift to count. So that's much talk for another time. Otherwise, I can even load more weight because I feel ready and warm up and warm enough to be able to do, uh, lift some more weight. So another important thing before I go on, so the bubble is uh, made of steel, but the plates are made of rubber so that they can absorb the shock because we're lifting the weights up and dropping it down on the floor. The floor is made of rubber as well to be able to absorb that shock. So here I go, I load it. the inside all right another aspect of safety a proper olympic weightlifting bar has uh, rotating collars so the bar should be able to spin these are collars and this is uh, the bubble so the bubble has to be able to spin on its own and the smoother the rotation the safer it is so never load the weight on a bubble that doesn't spin for safety because it can mess up your wrists. And another thing of safety as well is using the clips. So these are supposed to hold the plate so that it doesn't uh, roll out during lifting. So there I go and lock it out. And uh, another important safety thing, make sure when you're lifting there's no objects that are not used around the floor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push these away and get them off. So you can see that space around me is empty. So in case of a miss, I can be able to drop the bubble anywhere without hurting anybody or even hurting myself. Right, that's the snatch for you. So, how to perform a snatch? The standard basic rule is the bubble has to come from the floor to overhead in one motion. That's in professional weightlifting. But rather, many people, for example, in this place, just do weightlifting for fitness. So those rules can be pretty much be broken because our goal is just to lift for fitness and not for competition. But anybody who plans to do competition should be able, or rather must be aware of such rules. So after the snatch, I can hit the clean and jerk. So basically, the standard in professional weightlifting is for clean and jerk, the barbell has to be lifted from the floor to overhead in two motions. The first one is the clean, where you pick the barbell from the floor and rack it on your shoulders. And the second part is the jerk. So driving the bar from the shoulders to overhead. Each of those movements has to be one motion according to the standards. So this is a clean and jerk. You can do another rep. And one more to get warm enough for it.
those are a couple of reps. So for any training lifter, it is normal practice. Always start with an empty bar before loading the other, the, or rather before the loading more weight on the barbell. That's based on safety and efficiency and effectiveness. So after doing a couple of reps with the empty barbell, I'm so ready to load some more weight. And uh, each person can add weight according to their abilities. So those who lift more can load with bigger jumps. Those who lift less can load with smaller margins. And then typically for weightlifters, we use a different energy system than uh, runners or any people who do a lot who do cardio, which is a different type of uh, like uh, exercise. For we, our energy system, we use our muscle. Yeah, that's our storage for energy. So we do what we do is a couple of reps, then put the barbell down and get some rest to recover from that because it is explosive. We, uh, like we generate maximum force for each single lift. And with maximum force, you get worn, like you get worn out quickly. So we put the weight down after a couple of reps, then take a few seconds to recover our energy, then go for the, uh, the next. A typical rest is uh, one to two minutes. Yeah, so I'm gonna do this. And one more. Ooh. And that's it. So weightlifting has many advantages. That's why many people are doing it for fitness and not just for sports. For example, it is a great test of quite a number of things like strength, balance, flexibility, coordination yeah speed power all that stuff you're gonna get it from Olympic weightlifting and that's why that's why uh, certain sports that involve like uh, or rather that are highly explosive those athletes come into weightlifting to be able to build on that for example rugby players sprinters or wrestlers I was uh, longing for Olympics, Tokyo 2020, but unfortunately it didn't happen. And uh, during that process, I think we fell apart with the National Federation. And so by that, I think I um, retired from uh, competitive weightlifting. I lift for fun. I still compete, but uh, not representing the national team. Yeah, so next thing for me is uh, coaching people and lifting for fun. If you're out there and I've come across Olympic weightlifting and uh, you're not sure where and how to start, one of the things is try to reach out. You can find us on social media at Uzani Weightlifting and uh, reach out to us because uh, for me my job is helping people be good lifters. Yeah, so you need, uh, it's best to have a professional help or other guidance to be able to lift safely and effectively.